Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Justin Davis and today I'm excited because we have something new from Diatone. This is my prototype right here and I took the time to upgrade this one for you guys. Also put new PIDs on here, update the PIDs for you and give it a tune. This Mamba F4 on here is great, but it really needed a tune. There was vibration and jello right on the first day I flew this, right about 50% throttle. I started to see jello and do not pull back the throttle curve and limit your throttle amount on this. This is an 1103 setup with 8500 kV. It has tons of power, but flying it with 1103s, that's the point. We want a lot of power, but we don't want a lot of vibrations in jello. So don't limit your throttle. Let's tune this together. I'll show you the PIDs on the screen and you can put them on your own. So if you order this one with the Runcam Nano on there, we're gonna fly it with that on there as well. I upgraded it to that. Also with the AX2 II from Lumineer, that's brand new as well. That's the antenna that I'm gonna recommend that you put on yours because you're flying with a Unify Nano on here. There's no reason to use a crappy little dipole on something so nice like the Unify Pro Nano. So um, yeah, you can run up to 400 milliwatt. You're gonna get a great video back to your goggles with this antenna a very very nice antenna i'll put the links down below but we pid tuned it modded it and we're going to do some weigh in and a spec check and then we'll do some flying after that we'll come back in and i'll give you my final thoughts about this new version the new production version that's coming out probably next week or the week after that should be pretty nice so uh, all the reviewers have done a great job working on theirs and getting the media out to you guys so uh, this is my video enjoy let's go ahead and do the spec check and some flying here we go so first off, my camera on there was the newbie drone. Most of the guys got the same camera, and this looks like something for a tiny whoop, not so much a micro brushless. What you really want on there is the Runcam Nano. This is the Racer Nano. It has a power output from 3.3 to 5.5 volt, and it also has WDR, which is great. Lens is 1.8 millimeter and 160 degree field of view. So I took a couple zip ties and a camera stand, and I just bolted it on there with a converter. And I have my antenna wire running up out the back right there, just underneath the whole setup with the zip tie. And I've used this type of setup before. It's actually working pretty well. But the Lumineer AX2 2 right-hand circular polarized antenna right here with the UFL connector underneath. This is a really nice antenna. Also, we have the TBS Unified Pro 32 Nano VTX around 400 milliwatt, and we have the Mamba F411 Nano on here. And this is running Betaflight on it, OSD. 12 amp ESCs with DSHOT 600 up to 4S. You're not going to run it on anything other than 2S though. We also have a wheelbase of around 105 millimeters on this quad, a pretty nice strap, and we have a little tiny XT30. And I also put my XM Plus receiver on the bottom so I have more room up top for my conversion. And we're running 1103 8500 kV motors with uh, a really nice punch out. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. We have three screws on the bottom holding the motor in. And over here on this side of the frame, we have the thickness is around 1.6 millimeters and 3 millimeters tall. So this is 3K carbon fiber also, very rigid. One set comes in the box of 65 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter shaft props. They're not the greatest. There's a little bit of flex, but let's see what we have on the way in 51.2 grams with the conversion and the new antenna. And the battery of choice for me is that 300. That's going to get you up to about 72 grams. And the 2S450 is also good if you want a little long, longer flight time, around three and a half minutes. That'll get you up to 80.9 grams. So I think it's looking pretty good here. And let me show you the big difference between the two cameras. First, some line of sight flying. Let's go ahead and get it outside. This is the original one before I took the canopy off and the camera off. I'm just going to fly it so you can see it, how it came out of the box. And next up, I'll show you guys. And it's really, really nice and nice and nimble. I'm gonna share those pids with you guys as well. My tune on here with the the Runcam Nano on there. Pretty nice. I'm really happy with the punch out. The punch out is great. It will boost. It almost feels like a three inch quad or a five inch. It's really, really peppy. I love 1103 combo, especially with this weight ratio. This is definitely a great feeling micro toothpick here we go okay let's do some fpv flying now and let me start out with that newbie drone camera on there and let me show you the jello this is the jello from the 65 millimeter props at about just above half throttle it was terrible look at that jello 
That is unacceptable. So I had to remove that camera and put the new camera on there. Now you're looking at the Racer Nano. The Runcam Racer Nano is a much better camera. It handles lights and darks better, also going under trees, and it also has a six millisecond latency on there, and it has profiles, so you can change the profiles on the camera depending on what your weather conditions are. Uh, and now look at that tune. Now where we need to be with this tune. So uh, I'm gonna do one more maneuver here, just over this tree, just to show you how it handles a really big maneuver, back down and hardly any vibes. Now you can pause the screen right here. These are my PIDs. I'm gonna share those with the community and you can add those to your quad. It's gonna fly much better. And you can see even coming down out of the trees now, almost zero jello. I don't see any jello anymore. But the 65 millimeter props, they are notorious for high end throttle. When you have an 1103, you will get some vibration. And right here I'm just playing with this goal post, doing some power loops over top of it little split S back around see if I can pull another one after a split S and one more going for one more didn't quite make it back just gonna turn back around but another thing I wanted you to see is the punch out look at that even with all that power in those 65 millimeter props they do bend a lot so that's where you get the jello the props that are coming out now are far more stiff and they flex a little less which will produce less jello and that's what we're looking for with these micros, especially the toothpick. Ultra light, you need a pretty stiff prop. And we're gonna go do some more punch outs back over the trees here. And what I really like about this quad is the fact that it can fly really close to the ground at high speeds. And you can kind of explore with this quad, but it also has a ton of boost when you need it. You can go up over the biggest trees around. And some of these trees out here are 75, 80 feet tall. But look at that, inches off the ground, almost full throttle. I love the way this quad flies. It's super locked in now. Really, really nice. Back over these trees, looking for a spot to come down. Found one. Back over these trees for direction change. And we're gonna try to power loop these trees. Very fast, super fast quad. And I love these 1103 motors. I've been talking about these for years. 1102, 1103, they're great. Great size and weight. Tons of control with this frame as well. The yaw is really, really nice. I have the yaw tuned and it is very responsive snappy we even got some uh, spectators now these two kids were really digging this quad they thought it was the coolest thing they'd ever seen they came out with a scooter they were riding a scooter checking out my electric skateboard as well back down the stairs so this is a pretty easy way to get people into fpv they've never seen a lot of people have never seen something like this before and it really is a neat little quad so I'm happy where it is now with the new tune on there and hopefully you guys benefit from it. Even if you buy one with the new tiltable camera canopy and the Runcam Racer on there, the Runcam Nano, um, hopefully this tune helps you out and gets yours flying nice because I don't think it's really gonna ship with any kind of tune on it. So um, let me go ahead now and let's, uh, let's head back to the studio and let me give you my final thoughts about this quad and hopefully you enjoyed my line of sight and my FPV flight test. I had a lot of fun with this quad and it's really a joy to fly so I'm super happy even on 2S. It's a lot of fun. Here we go. All right guys welcome back from the flying. So let's talk about the components that they have on here. I think this frame is probably one of the coolest frames that I've seen come out um, lately. It's really rigid it has these internal posts on here. It's set up for a 16 by 16 stack. And hopefully with the new canopy design and a tiltable design, they're gonna come out with something that is far more durable than the newbie drone one that came with mine and on the 329 because guess what guys, I broke mine. It broke on one side and that's it. So you pretty much gonna have jello after that. If it breaks, you're done. Um, and it is breakable. You're gonna, you're gonna have some pretty hard crashes with this quad because it goes extremely fast. Now the next thing I'd like to see them do is, I would love it if Diatone would design some 65 millimeter props that are of uh, a little more rigid 
a little more rigidity all the way out to the end. These are the pyro drone props. And while these are nice, they have a lot of flex. And on that high throttle, all of that flex translates into, say it with me once kids, jello. So um, you're gonna get some jello and it's just not a very good prop for this much power. So if they will make something, call it the stiffy, make a stiffer prop and we'll put those on there. 1.5 millimeter shaft, by the way, if you're gonna order these. And we should get a much better um, flying quad if we have a little stiffer props. Now, the other thing is that the newbie drone camera, they're gonna get rid of that, so don't worry about that camera. They're gonna get a run cam nano on yours, and it's gonna be a much better experience. Um, you guys saw the difference between the videos uh, in comparison with both of these cameras. But I have to say, I think that the frame, the frame is gonna last. The components on here are good. And once they put the run cam on here, I think they're going to have a solid production release uh, and maybe a nicer antenna. I'm not sure what antenna they will choose, but it seems like they should have something nicer than a generic dipole on the back, um, especially with that nice VTX that we have on here. But uh, I'm not going to give this one a rating because this is just a prototype and uh, I just wanted you guys to see it and share my pits with you guys so that you guys can put those on yours when you get the production version. So uh, this is gonna be around the same way as the production version that's coming to you if you decide to order the 229 and um, you'll be able to fly yours without any jello. So other than the few problems that I ran into with the jello and uh, issues with the camera canopy braking, uh, I think that everything else on here is looking pretty good and I think they're on the way to making a nice production version for you guys. So uh, it will be worth the money. I think it's coming in around $120 or so. So a really nice little 2S ripper for around that price. And the 3S version is probably going to be super insane, um, super fast. So more experienced guys, you're going to love that one. But this one is also even something that a new person could start out with and fly it around with 2S batteries. They're super cheap and it can get you into the hobby. But thanks again for watching, guys. I'm Justin Davis, and this has been my GTB 229. Thanks again. Please do subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.